Go on, please. On the 14th of October 2005, ball tracking company Hawkeye officially became the first ITF certified electronic line calling system after passing stringent tests at the Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York. Electronic line calling has since become a big part of tennis, first as a TV coverage aid and then on court. Companies such as Fox 10 in 2016 and Flightscope in 2020 have also joined the throng. But the battle for clay court officiating supremacy is coming to a head. Roland Garros is the only Grand Slam yet to implement electronic line calling. But could that change in 2021? In the past, electronic line calling has not been used on clay as the court surface allows for bounce mark impressions to be inspected by umpires. But in recent years, several high-profile disputes over ball marks have left many wondering, why not? With Hawkeye not in use, Spanish company Fox 10 has been able to steal some ground by becoming the first system to be approved for clay surfaces. Fox 10 uses more than 40 synchronized cameras and lasers, which gather 2,500 images per second in order to show actual super slow motion replay footage of the ball contacting the surface. In 2021, Charleston became the first WTA clay event to use electronic line calling using Fox 10. But why has it taken so long for such a system to be implemented at clay court tournaments? Well, the ITF has always stated that stadium-specific testing must be conducted prior to implementing electronic line calling at a tournament. This involves balls being fired either by a person or a ball cannon at all the lines on a court. On hard courts, these shots leave bounce marks, which are then measured and the results compared against the electronic line calling results. The process continues until each line is given a score. Only once all the lines pass the threshold can a court be signed off as meeting the requirements for electronic line calling. On grass courts, where no bounce mark is left, the ITF uses high-speed cameras and ultra-slow motion replay software to measure the exact moment the ball touches the first blade of grass. This is then recorded as the bounce mark and the testing continues as it would on hard courts. Because grass courts wear down during tournaments, a second series of testing may be carried out. On the middle Sunday at Wimbledon, for example, when the grass is being rested, all courts are recalibrated and retested by Hawkeye to allow for the change in grass length. If this was not done, the system would be calling the ball more in during the second week due to the lowering of the court surface. Testing on clay is more problematic, however. The courts have a movable surface layer, which makes for very different tennis. Players slide, their heavy topspin forehands grip the surface, and on a dry, windy day, the top layer can swirl up and cause chaos. It's these properties, though, that make using the bounce marks left behind tough indicators of where the ball actually made initial contact with the ground. The ball marks left on clay are essentially compression marks. They don't necessarily show where the ball made initial contact, but instead the point where the ball compressed before bouncing. Couple this with a movable surface and the Hawkeye system will consistently find the ball further in than the ball mark measurement. So why not use a high-speed camera like they do on grass? The problem is the ball marks remain on the court and it's this mark that players, umpires and fans naturally assume is where a ball landed. Imagine a player seeing a clear and obvious ball mark just outside the tram lines only for an electronic system visualization to show the ball had clipped the line before bouncing. Ignoring a ball mark and trusting a computer goes against every instinct of all involved. This is where Fox 10 has an advantage. Its replays show actual footage of the ball contacting the surface, which goes some way to reducing the ambiguity. Whether the system is, scientifically, more or less accurate than the Hawkeye system is almost irrelevant. It simply makes more sense to the eye. Communicating all that to players, umpires and fans is a huge undertaking and is the real reason why its inception on clay has been so prolonged. But this is going to have to change. Early in 2021, the ATP announced all hard-court Masters events would use electronic line-calling systems to replace line judges. In order to reduce the number of people needed on court and ensure some form of social distancing, in doing so, advantage swung back in Hawkeye's favour. Its new Hawkeye Live system has the ability to show real-time bounce data and has replaced officials at these Masters events. The Hawkeye Live system has also been used at both the Australian Open and the US Open, as well as some smaller events. 
The fact Hawkeye's system uses 12 cameras per court compared to Fox 10's 40 is another advantage for them. Rolling Fox 10's system out across all courts at Roland Garros, for example, would be a huge undertaking, especially considering the 40 cameras reportedly need to be operated by a further 10 computers. Multiply that by 20 or so courts and you're looking at the installation of 800 cameras operated by 200 computers. Coupled with the fact Hawkeye's infrastructure has long been in place at Roland Garros and used as a broadcasting tool, and it seems inevitable that 2021 could be the first year we see Hawkeye used at Roland Garros.